Hello and praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Roderick Caesar III. I'm the lead pastor here at Foundation Church in Jamaica, Queens, New York, where we exalt Jesus, equip his people, and expand his kingdom. We're so grateful that you'll join us for service today. I pray you're blessed. I pray you're encouraged. I pray you're challenged. I want you to like, share, and subscribe if this video is a blessing to you. Thank you so much, and God bless you. We are Foundation Church, and we are built different. The Lord is building his house, so we do not labor in vain. His kingdom cannot be shaken, so we will stand firm. We will build on the pillars of those that came before us and leave a Holy Spirit-filled legacy for those that are behind us. We will walk in him, deeply rooted and built up, so the world will know the soul-saving, life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Foundation Church. For dying and then rising again to prove to us how much you love us God so we thank you for all of these things in Jesus name amen amen we give glory and honor to Jesus because it is to his name amen amen glory and honor
Him. Hallelujah. 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 Are you excited about Jesus? Are you excited that He rose? Hallelujah. He lives today. And because He lives, we live also. Hallelujah. Join us in this hymn. Hallelujah. I serve a risen Savior. A risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see. not here just to have church, ladies and gentlemen, saints of God. We're here to celebrate our risen Savior. Amen? So come on and let's give God all the praise that he rightly deserves. 
Hallelujah. I'm here to read the scripture text uh, for today. It's taken from Matthew chapter 28. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to ask everyone that can stand to please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. How many of us know that if we stand for God's word, it will stand in us. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Let's read together. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Hallelujah. Listen, how many of us know that God, our Jesus, is a promise keeper? When we read that scripture, he, the, 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 the scripture said something. It said that he has risen. The angel said it. And he said, just as he said. How many of us believe this morning the promises of God over your life? How many of you? Well, if that's you and you've got some promises that are, that are before God and you're believing God today, I want you to come to this altar right now. Because this is the time to believe our risen Savior. If you have that you are going through, if you have praying for, why not come to the altar right now? Stand in proxy for them. Believe the promises of the Lord. If he said he was going to rise and he rose, how many of you believe that the promises he said over your life are going to come to pass? Come on and let's pray together. Come on, come on, and let's worship the Lord. Don't, don't come in dismay. Don't come doubting. Come believing. Hallelujah. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. Father God, in the precious name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come this afternoon thanking you, Lord, for keeping your word. Thanking you, Lord, that death could not hold you. Thanking you, Lord, that sin, dear God, you took our sin to the grave. And when you rose again, you caused us to rise in you. Sin no longer enslaves us, no longer bounds us. Father, we thank you this afternoon that everything that you have promised over our, our lives are yea and amen. You are the risen Savior. 
You're not dead, but you are alive. You are well. You are hearing and answering prayer. And Father, this afternoon, we thank you for every one of us that are at this altar this, morning, this afternoon. Dear God, lifting our hands, we're not lifting in disbelief. God, we pray that you would increase our faith. You would allow us to believe, dear God, that what we read is not just a story, but it is true, it is life. You are the true and living God. And what you say will and has and will certainly, surely come to pass. Father, we pray even for this service. You have sent, dear God, of souls in this house. Hallelujah. And Father, we pray this afternoon, dear God, that everything that we present to you at this altar, dear God, we won't take it back. Oh God, help us by faith to leave it in your hands and to go back rejoicing knowing that you will in the fullness of your time answer each and every prayer that we bring before you lord we pray for the spoken word we pray over your manservant this afternoon that god he would move with demonstration and power and your authority oh god and that souls would be saved and father we pray that this would not just be a service but it would be a time of deliverance it would be a time of awakening a time of renewal a time where, God, we would receive new wine into new wine skins. God, that we would leave better uh, than we came, dear God, because we've been in your presence. So, Father, as we go back to our seats, we say, Hallelujah. We say, Thank you, Lord. We rejoice in you as our risen Savior. And, God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, come on, saints, let's say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here are the announcements for our church today. Baby Caesar is on the way. Foundation Church family, we are so excited to encourage Lady Steph and Pastor Rod as they prepare to welcome a new addition to their beautiful family. On Sunday, April 14th, after 9 a.m. service, pass through the BCMC for a baby sprinkle in celebration of this new chapter. To donate a gift, we are encouraging gift cards and monetary donations via Zelle at rrcaesar 3 at bgtintl.com. The Caesars are also registered at Amazon and Target. For additional details, please contact the church office. Refresh your body, mind, and spirit this spring with the Women's Ministry of Foundation Church. Join us for a delightful brunch and engaging discussions on wellness, self-care, and beyond. Mark your calendars for Saturday, April 27th at noon in our BCMC. Tickets are $30 each. Don't forget to invite a friend along for this rejuvenating experience. Let's embrace a season of new beginnings together. Attention all contributors using envelopes for offerings and tithes. Kindly ensure that you include your name on the envelopes when making contributions. This will ensure that you receive proper credit for your generosity. Your name is more essential for identification purposes than providing an ID. We appreciate your cooperation in this regard. Thank you for your continued support and understanding. We appreciate you taking the time to view our announcements video and for being a valued member of our Foundation Church community.
it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to celebrate the fact that we are serving a Lord who is very much alive. The scripture says he ever lives to make intercession for us before the throne of God. And knowing that should excite us because we are a part of the family of God. It's diverse and it is addressing the need of mankind in these troubled times in which we live. Before I do anything else, let me uh, extend an invitation to any who have children who uh, would uh, be benefited by the nursery. Our nursery is open at this time, and if you will uh, seek the, the assistance of an usher at the door, if you have a child that uh, is between the ages of six months and three years, we will take care of them and attend to their needs so that you can be unencumbered in your worship as we enjoy the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there, oh mercy there was great and grace was free, and pardon there was multiplied to me. Calvary. Calvary made possible our salvation because the Lord had to go through Calvary to be buried, to raise triumphantly from the dead, and we celebrate the fact that he's alive today. And he's alive in us. That's why we entered his gates with thanksgiving, why we entered his courts with praise, and we made the declaration, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Amen? So rejoice a little more. Give him some more praise. Come on. Hallelujah, and God bless you. Amen.
Do you believe that he reigns? Amen. He is worthy of the glory. There's nobody like him. Just as if we can picture heaven and we're all seated at the throne of God, those who believe and have accepted him as his per our personal saviors. So can we just have a little rehearsal this morning? If you could just stand up to your feet, if you can, and give God glory, what would it be like to see God reigning at the right hand of the Father? Seated in all his glory, we say hallelujah. We say glory to your name. Let's have a rehearsal as if we're in heaven. Hallelujah to Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We give you glory, we salute you for making the sacrifice for us so that we might be free from sin, hallelujah. And you rose on the third day, hallelujah to Jesus. We bless the name of God. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Don't be afraid to lift your hands and give him glory because he's worthy of the honor. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Nobody like you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, a thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the All who gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land. So we all say, Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all, all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy 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 all creation cries out to the
boy for 30 seconds. He reigns, he rules, he's in control. Healing in the sanctuary in the name of Jesus. Healing in the sanctuary in the name of Jesus. God, keep us and sustain us as we leave this place. Prepare our hearts as we hear the word, oh God. Won't you lift up the name of Jesus in this place? I said, let's put our hands together and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, worthy of praise, worthy of honor, worthy of glory. If you know he's worthy, won't you put your hands together and lift up his name? Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy, 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 worthy worthy thank you lord thank you lord god bless you you may be seated in the presence of the lord what a mighty god we serve we serve a risen king amen a risen savior amen what a blessing an honor a privilege it is to be able to worship the lord in spirit and in truth on this resurrection sunday can you put your hands together for this resurrection sunday this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it in what the lord is doing amen amen uh i'm excited uh, i want to give a, a shout out to everyone who came through to our consecration and was blessed by it on this past thursday friday saturday uh we are now walking in a new thing that god is doing we are now praying for the new wine the new wine skins we have new garments a new mindset to be able to make new habits and new decisions in this time of prayer and fasting. We've come out the other side greater than we were when we walked in. Can we get an amen, somebody? Because you are brand new and better too because of what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm grateful. Uh, I said to uh, the 9 o'clock service, I said, uh, y'all know there's two services, right? Is that 9 o'clock? We had to put chairs down and the balcony. I said, 9 o'clock was crazy. I said, y'all know there's two. Y'all have a whole nother option to come to this service. But y'all, 1130, we're here. We're rocking it. And it's going to be a blessing. And I'm grateful for what the, what the Lord will do throughout uh, this service. Amen? Amen. Uh, we serve a risen king. We serve a risen savior. I want to emphasize uh, this fact and take a look at a chapter in the Bible uh, and a, a chapter in a book of the Bible that's often misunderstood. It's often stayed away from, uh, even by Christians. Uh, it's the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 5 is where uh, I'll be focusing my attention today. Uh, we'll be focusing our attention today. So I ask that you lean in. Uh, you, we're going to hear uh, just some interesting things. I'm going to try my best to... Uh, make it plain, make it clear so we can follow along and understand what it means uh, that Jesus is the lion and the lamb. Revelation chapter 5, John writes, he says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within. So the scroll had information in it. And on the back of the scroll, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. 
And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And when he came back, he took he took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang, watch this, a new song, saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed or purchased men, people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation and you have made them a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth then I looked and I heard around the throne living creatures the elders the voices of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and glory and honor and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshiped. Now before we look further into this chapter that's a lot to unpack a lot of imagery to unpack I'd like to give some background info on the book of Revelation. Now, this book of Revelation is the last book of the New Testament, which happens to be the last book of the Bible. If you have your Bible, you flip to Genesis all the way to the very end. The last book is Revelation. This is where we find ourselves in Revelation. This book was written by the disciple John. John was known as the disciple who Jesus loved. In fact, watch this. When Peter, uh, after Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus resurrected and he came back and had a conversation with Peter. And he said to Peter, he said, uh, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, then feed my sheep. He says this three times, three times to confirm the fact that even though things are, are, are difficult, even though you denied me these times, uh, I'm going to uh, show you grace, compassion, and mercy by saying I love you three times to cover those three denials. And in the midst of this denials being being covered and the Lord being uh, 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 Peter being reunited and, and restored with the Lord, what we see happening is Peter is not focused on this uh, uh, reuniting, but instead he's focused on John. He's focused on John. While this is a, a wonderful thing, a, a beautiful thing, he's focused on John. He turns and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, following them, and also the one who had leaned against him during the Lord's Supper. And he said, Lord, who's going to betray you? He sees this and he says to, to uh, the Lord, he says, Jesus, what about this man? What about John? What's going to happen with him? Even back then, folks struggled with comparison. Even back then, the trap of comparison was alive and well. He said, what's going to happen with him? And Jesus says, if it's my will that he's going to remain till I come, what's that to you? You follow me. He says, listen, the instructions I just gave you, I need you to walk out in. I need you to, to, to obey me. I need you to be obedient in and, and walk out in with the instructions that I gave to you instead of comparing yourself and saying, hey, what's going on with John? What's going on with this person? What are you going to do with him? He said, listen, that's, that's fine. Whatever I have for him is for him. You walk in what I've called you to do. And in this day and age, when uh, a comparison is so easily accessible, looking at what folks are doing, we can get so caught up in what God is doing in someone else's life or in the success or the, 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 what we see in someone else's life that we forget that God is doing a work in us. I don't want us, saints of God, to be so caught up in what the Lord may be doing or in what, me, in what we may be seeing in the lives of others that we neglect the work that the Lord wants to do on the inside of us. So uh, uh, Jesus says, if it's my will that he'll remain until I come, what's that to you? So there was a rumor that, that developed among the disciples. This rumor basically said that John was not going to die, but he's going to live until Jesus comes. But Jesus didn't say that John would not die. He said, if he is, does live until I come, what is that to you? I've given you a mission. But we see that John was one of Jesus' last living disciples. The disciples, they all... Uh, uh, church history lets us know that the majority of them, if not all of them, if I'm not mistaken, uh, were martyred for their faith. 
They were killed for their belief in Jesus Christ by the government of the day. And John uh, was tried to be executed as well. The, the, the rulers of the day had him boiled alive, as church history states. But he did not perish in this. Instead, God preserved him through the power of his spirit. He did not die, but instead he was banished. He was exiled to an island called Patmos, a Greek island in the Aegean Sea. There he's worshiping in the spirit, not just singing kumbaya, my Lord, not just, you know, feeling good about his, his moment in time of, of having a moment with God. He's in the spirit, the text says. So he's deep uh, in the throne room of God, worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. And then he sees a vision that the Lord commands him to write down. That vision is this book, the book of Revelation. Now, Revelation is a prophetic book, a prophetic book, one that uses imagery, numerology, and signs to represent other things. It can be confusing, but on this Resurrection Sunday, I want us to focus in on what takes place specifically in chapter 5. So now we can see and how we can use the truths in chapter 5 in our lives today, that Jesus Christ is both the lion and the lamb. As we continue to take a look, before we d uh, dive deeper into chapter 5, I want to give just some insight into chapters 1 through 4. In chapter 1, John lets us know what the book is going to be about. He greets the seven churches uh, with the letters that are written, and he goes into detail about his vision of Jesus. He sees Jesus. He says he's, he hears someone giving him instruction to, to write these things that are to come. He hears this voice. He turns around, and he sees someone like the Son of Man. Someone that reminded him of Jesus, but looked nothing like Jesus. If you hear about what took place and hear about the words that uh, were spoken and how he described Jesus, this person looked nothing like the Jesus that John knew. This looked like a resurrected king filled in heavenly splendor. But yet he identifies this person as Jesus. He sees Jesus and falls to his feet falls to his feet, falls on his knees, and Jesus says, John, fear not. I've called you to write this letter to the seven churches. Now, chapters 2 and 3 go into detail about each church. There's seven individual letters to seven different churches. Chapters 2 and 3 dissect and go deeper about what Jesus had to say to each church. He starts off by saying what he's proud of in each church, how they're doing good, how they're doing a great job, how they're doing wonderful. And then he goes on to list some issues that he has with them, issues that he has with the churches. I don't know about you, but I, I'm glad that I serve a God that does not leave us where I, that does not leave us where we are. He doesn't just say, I'm proud of you for this. I'm proud of you for that. Great job. But he says, listen, you're deficient in this area. I've seen that you can do better in this area. I've seen that I'm calling you higher as a son or daughter, as a child of God in the kingdom of God. I have issue with you because of this. That's what he was writing to the churches. He says, listen, you're, you're doing a great job. I've seen how you've, uh, how you've kept the faith. I've seen how you've preserved uh, your integrity. I've seen how you've continued to, to fast and seek my face. But I have issue with you in these areas. You've let sin creep in in this area. You, you've you've uh, uh, stepped out of line with what I've called you to do in these areas. I'm so glad we serve a God that keeps us in check. That we serve a God that does not see us wandering, see us straying, and leave us to our own devices. But he says, just like he said to the churches, listen, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Keep running the race. But I have issue with you. This is what you could be doing better. Imagine if the Lord penned a letter to Foundation Church, formerly known as Bethel Gospel Tabernacle. Foundation Church, you're doing this. You're doing that. It's wonderful. It's great. Continue. But this... I have against you. Now imagine if we go deeper than that. Yeah, we have foundation church, but we as God's people are the church. So imagine the Lord writing a letter to you, addressing it to you. Fill in the blank. Your name here. You're doing great. You're doing wonderful. I'm proud of you in this area. I'm proud of you in this area. But in this, I take issue with you. You could be doing better here. You could be doing better there. Let's step up. And walk in a way uh, that, that holds uh, true to the standard that God has called us to. Amen? These verses in, in chapters 2 through 3 are where we get verses like, but this I have against you. You have abandoned the love that you have at first. Go back 
and do those former works. Come back to your first love. Revelation 3 says, I know your works. You're neither hot nor cold. Many of us may be familiar with this verse. I want you to be hot or cold. Instead, you're lukewarm. Because you're lukewarm, I cannot stomach you. I will spit you out of my mouth. Revelation chapter 2 says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We want to have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying to us. Amen. Chapter 4 is where things get a bit interesting. John's revelation gets a bit deeper. Gets a bit deeper. John now goes from just talking about how the churches can improve to the vision he experienced while on the island. You following? He says, he says, instead of just talking about how the churches can improve and what they can do better, I want to share with you this vision that I was able to witness, this vision that I was able to see. Chapter 4 goes into great detail. John sees a beautiful, majestic throne. John sees a vision of the future. He looks at heaven and sees God on his throne being worshipped by some unique heavenly beings. One of the, the types of beings are the 24 elders. 24 elders are the people that are in authority but also under authority. In heaven, they're clothed in white garments. They have crowns on their heads. Another group of individuals that John sees are four living creatures, he calls them. These creatures are hybrids of various animals mixed with wings, eyes, uh, mixed with wings and, their, uh, and eyes all over. And their descriptions can be perplexing. But what you need to know is that day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come and the 24 elders they take their crowns off and they cast their crowns before the throne of god and they say worthy are you lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being what this lets us know is that whether we open up our mouths and give god glory or not god's going to get the praise whether we clap our hands and lift our hands and stand to our feet, whatever that looks like, God's still going to get the glory that's due his name. If it's not from us, the rocks cry out. If by chance the rocks fail to cry out, these elders and these living creatures are before the throne of God saying, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are holy from the beginning of time to present time for the times to come. You will be and you're worthy of glory, honor and praise. God is going to get the glory. That is due his name. Can I get an amen, somebody? Give God some praise in this place. Thank you, Lord. So we move forward from here to chapter 5. And in chapter 5, this is where we land for today. Things continue to remain interesting as John describes what happens next. So after he sees the throne of God, he then goes on to describe what happens next. In Revelation chapter 5, he says, Then I saw in the right hand of him, God, who was seated on the throne. In scripture, the right hand is the hand of authority, the hand of power. And in his right hand was this scroll that had something written, written within it. And on the back, it was sealed. So how communications were given then, if you wrote something important on a scroll, you handed it to someone, but you sealed that scroll. So it had to be opened in order for it to be read. And so this scroll had seven different seals. So it wasn't just uh, read with, with one opening, but you had to open seven different seals in order uh, for this scroll to be read and understood. And a mighty angel shows up and proclaims with a loud voice, who is worthy? to open the scroll and break its seals. Now at this point, we don't know what's in the scroll. We don't know what it does. We don't know what opening these seals will do. All we know is that heaven wants these scrolls open. Heaven wants these scrolls open. And the angel is asking, who is worthy to open these scrolls? So they go on a search. God sits high, but he looks low. And they search heaven. They search earth, they search under the earth, and no one was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And John, the text says, begins to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. They're looking all over because heaven wants to continue on with this chapter. Heaven wants to continue on with the next step. Heaven wants to have this scroll open so the will of God can be done. And there's no one to open this scroll. And John is mourning. John is weeping. John is crying. 
because he had this feeling of being stuck. When I was a family, when I was a, a child years ago, uh, my family and I went on a, a cross country trip. We took this big van, and we were uh, well. My father and my father believed in most of the driving, so he was driving around on this this, uh, this family trip. And at one of our stops, something happened where the keys were locked in the car. And this is a big, big van. We're driving this van. The keys are locked in the van. And this is before OnStar, before, you know, apps to open your car, if you leave your, it's before all that stuff. So they're trying to figure it out. My parents are talking, trying to figure something out. But on the side of this, this, this van was a small window, small window. So they came up with an idea. They looked at the window, and they looked at me. Okay, they looked at the window. Once again, this is years ago. They looked at the window, they looked at me. They said, Rod, can you, can you make it, try to make your way through this window? Now, I'm a kid. I'm just ready for adventure, okay? I'm like, this is a mission. I got this. Let's go. Slide open this window, and I'm, I'm climbing my way through. I, I somehow get my shoulders through. Make it through in the car. I'm able to unlock the car doors so the vacation can continue. You hear me to this day? I'm like, yo, we would have no vacation without your boy, without my sacrifice, me squeezing through this window, unlocking these doors. But the conditions were met. I met the requirements, and I was the only one that could do it. They looked at the window. They looked at me. They said, okay, this works out. Let's see if we can make this work. Similarly, heaven needed someone to fit some certain requirements for this scroll to be opened. Now, here's some information on this scroll and its seal. Spoiler alerts, we're in chapter 5. Chapter 6 details what these scrolls, what the scroll uh, is, what contains, what's in the scroll, excuse me. And... Each seal is opened and different things happen. The scroll and the seals signify end time events throughout history. And as each seal is opened, a judgment of the Lord begins to take place throughout the earth. So these things need to take place for the second coming of Christ to be realized. So John had every right to weep. Heaven had every right to search high and low. But just then, when all hope seemed lost... One of the 24 elders turns to John and says, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Weep no more. The angel said to Mary as she was at the tomb, why do you cry? Why do you cry? She said, oh, they, uh, they took my master's body. I don't know where he is. And then Jesus shows up and says, hey, I'm alive. I'm here. Why do you cry? Weep no more. Dry your tears. He is here. Dry your tears. He is risen and he is worthy to open this scroll. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has what? Conquered so that he can open the scroll in the seventh seal. The lion has conquered. Let's, let's uh, take some time just to do a bit of looking at what it means, the lion of Judah. It's a common phrase, one that we may have heard before, the lion of Judah. And in Genesis chapter 49, Jacob, the patriarch of Israel, his name was changed to Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And on his deathbed, on his deathbed, he prophetically blesses 12 of his sons. 12 of his sons would go on to create the 12 tribes of Israel. He prophetically blesses 12 of his sons. He speaks life into their lives. Fathers, it's important. It's pivotal. That we speak lives into the lives, life into the lives of our children. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to do it. It's great that, that uh, Jacob had this time. But take time to speak life into your children. Take time to speak hope into your children. Take time to speak God's truth as a father, as a priest in the home, over the lives of your children. So Jacob took time to do this on his deathbed and poured out hope and truth into his sons. And he blessed his children. One of his sons' name was Judah. And Judah, he says, watch this. He says, Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Now, Judah wasn't the oldest of his brothers. 
So it would be odd for him to receive praise or honor from his brothers because in this culture, custom, and time, he was not the oldest. But still, his father tells him, your brothers will praise you. And your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Basically, no one is defeating you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. And watch this. He speaks not just about Judah, but about those that will come through the line of the tribe of Judah. He says, your father's son shall bow down before you. Then he says, Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion, as a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? Watch this. The scepter, he says, which is a staff that a king uses to rule. A scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Judah was going to have one of his descendants be worshipped. Judah was going to have one of his descendants have royalty and be able to be king forever and ever. Judah was going to have one of his descendants be like a lion. His tribe would be like lions. Who dares to rouse them? Now, if we look in the text, we'll see that Jesus was born not into the tribe of Dan, not into the tribe of Levi, but into the tribe of Judah. He is that lion. He is that king. And if we look through his genealogy, we'll see that the tribe of Judah is the line of David. David, Israel's arguably greatest king. And he says uh, that he, God made David a promise that his line, his reign would never end. And that is fulfilled through Jesus the Christ. That's why he says the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. It's all connected. This lion has conquered, conquered death, conquered the grave, and is now worthy to open the scroll. So everyone's excited because this lion of the tribe of Judah shows up. This lion of the tribe of Judah is ready to open the scroll. But then between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, this lion begins to change shape and he sees a lamb standing as though it had been slain with the wounds of death all over it. And though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits that are sent out into all of the earth. Now, scholars suggest that the number seven represents completion. A complete number. And this picture is used. Remember, Revelation is a prophetic book which uses numerology, numbers, and different images to convey certain meanings. This picture is used not just to show seven individual spirits, but the complete work of the Holy Spirit in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And this lamb was standing as though it had been slain, but yet it lives. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. When, Gen when Abraham was called to sacrifice his son Isaac, Isaac turns to him as they're walking up to this mountain in the book of Genesis chapter 22. And Isaac says to his father, my father. And Abraham says, here I am, my son. He's going to take these steps to do something he never thought possible. Kill the promise that God promised him. He's been raising this boy and God says, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, slay him as a burnt offering to me. He says, the son Isaac looks at his father and says, listen, we have the fire. We have the wood for the fire. We have uh, the wood. We have the fire and we have the wood. But where is this lamb for the burnt offering? He's looking. He says, listen, we have everything, but the main thing is not there. And Abraham replies. He says, God will provide for himself. The lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. Abraham goes up hoping and praying that he does not have to go through with this. And knowing that somehow God will uh, make, the, make it so that they will both come down together from this mountain. As Abraham goes to sacrifice his son, an angel of the Lord cracks open the skies of heaven and says, Abraham, stop. The Lord says, now I see that you can be trusted. And he uh, realizes there's a, lamb, a ram that has its horns caught in a thicket. Just as he said, the Lord will himself provide a lamb. Take your son, your only son, whom you love. Abraham did not have to uh, uh, slaughter his son. But we know a father. We know God gave his only son and did not, uh, 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 did not restrain did not say, you know, it's okay. 
The ram was the substitute for Isaac, but Jesus Christ was the substitute for us. The lamb that was slain. Moses was instructed to have on their exile, on their, excuse me, exodus from Egypt. Moses was instructed to take the Passover lamb, have Israel kill the lamb, and to spread the blood of the lamb over their doorpost. Why? So that when the angel of death came, it would not visit their house and their firstborn would be saved. Instead, it would pass over because it would see the blood of the lamb and say, I cannot come near this place. In the same way, the second death passes over us as sons and daughters because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53 says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. Jesus was crushed or bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we... All of us, you, me, your mother, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, all of us, all we, just like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We've all done what we wanted to do. We've all hardened our hearts. We've all shaken our fists at God. We've all gone uh, with, in a way that seems right to us. And the Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. We've all done wrong. But our wrong was not laid upon us. It was laid upon Jesus. And he carried it on Calvary's cross. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that was led to slaughter. And a sheep that, uh, like a lamb that was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep before its shears is silent. He opened not his mouth. Jesus, like a lamb, slain lamb that was led to the slaughter. John the Baptist sees Jesus as he's going to be baptized and says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We see that Jesus is a lion, but he's also the Lamb. And the Lamb went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. Don't let anybody tell you your prayers are not heard. Right here we see your prayers are at work in heaven. Your prayers are at work, the prayers of the saints. And they sang not an old song, but a new song that they came up with right there on the spot. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed men for God, and every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. By your blood you ransomed people for God. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I was lost in sin. I was dead in my sin, dead in my trespasses, and I needed ransoming. I needed rescuing. I needed deliverance. And God picks us up, cleans us, places our feet on solid ground. And he's going to watch this. He's going to make more of us than we could ever imagine in this life, but then also in the next. He says, you've made them a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. We're not just going to be sitting around playing harps, chilling. We're going to have responsibilities to rule and reign. Not some people, but all people from every tribe, every language, every nation, every tongue. That is what the power of the Lamb does in our lives. Then I looked and I heard around the throne. And when the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, they all praised the Lord, numbering myriads and myriads and thousands upon thousands. Imagine with me for a moment the hosts of heaven. What John saw, what John heard, angels as far as the eye can see. It's got to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands, all singing, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature on earth, under the earth, under the sea, all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and glory and honor and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Now this is beautiful imagery. This is beautiful what takes place in chapter 5. It's a wonderful message of, of hope. A wonderful message of a future that is to come. But how does this apply in our lives today? How does this matter to us that Jesus is the lion 
and the lamb. Jesus is the lion. The lion of Judah shall break every chain and give to us the victory, not just one time, but again and again and again. Jesus Christ came as a conqueror, conquering king that will allow us to live victoriously in our todays, allow us to live victoriously in our tomorrows because we know that he has the power. We know that he has the authority. And when he roars, our enemies must scatter. When he roars, our enemies must flee because we have victory over sin through the lion of the tribe of Judah. We have victory over shame through the lion of the tribe of Judah. We have victory over death, over the grave through the lion of the tribe of Judah. One knee, every one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when your temptations arise, you say, I don't have to bow down to you. I have victory through the lion of the tribe of Judah. When shames try to keep you you bat, uh, when shame tries to keep you bound, you can say, no, no, not so. I can rise up because I, I believe in this roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. I don't have to be a slave to sin. I don't have to be a slave to shame. I don't have to be a slave to my past. I'm not defined by what I've done. I have victory and I can conquer through the lion of the tribe of Judah. Give God some praise in this place. That's how that applies to us today. But God is not just the lion. He is also the lamb. And we don't have to slay any lambs anymore. We don't have to sprinkle any blood on the door because someone has taken the place of the lamb. His name is Jesus Christ, the great I am. In him, we have redemption. In the lamb, we have forgiveness of sins. In him, we've been ransomed from the clutches of death and raised from death to life. Sin has to loosen its grip, its hold on you because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We've been washed, saints of God. We've been made new, saints of God. We've been forgiven, saints of God. We've been transformed. We've been cleansed. Death has no sting. The grave has no power because of the shed blood of the Lamb of God. The beauty of this text and the reality that we're living in light of this, both the lion and the lamb are two sides of the same coin. Both the lion and the lamb are two realities that exist within the same person. And that person's name is Jesus Christ, the God man. I want us to take Jesus out of the box that we placed him in. Take him out of the box that we placed him in. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter on Calvary's cross. But he rose with all power in his hand. And walks out of that grave like a lion that breaks every chain. And for us in our lives, the Lord can be to us and say to us just what he said to Moses. Moses was talking to the burning bush. The Lord God, the voice of the Lord told him to go to Egypt to set his people free. And Moses asked, who shall I say sent me? And God says, I am that I am. What that means is I will be what I will be. In your respective seasons, the lion is here. Whatever situation you need the lion for, the roar of the lion is here. Whatever situation you need the grace of the lamb for, the lamb is here. I will be what you need me to be. In each season, you need me to be that thing. The lamb is risen. The lion has conquered. And his name is Jesus the Christ. And saints, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, not some fear, but all fear is gone. Because we know that he holds the future. Life is worth living again because he lives. And one day, we will be able to join in with the angels and say, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, honor and glory and blessing to him who sits on the throne. And to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Let's give God some praise in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you've won the victory. Thank you, Lord, because you, yes, died, but you did not stay dead. Thank you, Lord, that you are lion and lamb in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you are more than able to conquer. Thank you, Lord, that we have victory through the shed blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that it is not over, but we can continue to have life and life more abundantly through you. Thank you, Lord, that we are not defined by our past. We're not defined by our mistakes. We're not stuck in our situations. 
But you have the ability to break change through your roar. You have the ability to have us move on from shame because of your shed blood. Thank you, God, that you are both lion and lamb in our lives. If you've heard this message and you realize, hey, I, I, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't have a personal relationship with him. I want to come to Jesus today. I want to make a, a decision to stand with this lion, to stand with the lamb, and be a changed person. I'm tired of the, the mistakes that I, I used to make. I'm tired of being the person that I used to be. And I know that I need the lamb in my life because I, I, I can't seem to get over the shame of my sin. And I want to be forgiven. I want to be cleansed. I want to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. I need the lamb in my life. I want the lion in my life. I need the lion to be able to resist sin when it comes against me. I feel like I'm always succumbing and I, I don't know Jesus. I don't have this relationship to be able to walk out in victory and in truth. If that's you, if you're not sure, maybe you're just unsure of where you would go if you were to leave this life and to move into eternity. And you don't know if you would be with Jesus or separated from him. And you want to make a decision today to be sure. If that's you, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand. If you're here and you don't know Christ and you want to come to know him today, is there anyone here? We'd be remiss if we had this service. We celebrated the Lord and then we just went out, had a good time, celebrated the Sunday and not made a life-changing decision that needs to be made. If that's you and you know that's you and I'm speaking to you, you feel as though you want to get up, but you, you know, you're, you're having second thoughts about it. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you want to be sure of your salvation, if you don't know Jesus Christ, we have individuals that will pray with you. We don't want to put you on the spot. We just want you to be sure of your relationship with Christ and walk in here differently. I walk out of here, excuse me, different than when you came in. Anyone here, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Just take a step of, of honesty, boldness, raise your hand. If you're watching, you can text SAVE to the number at the bottom of your screen. We have individuals that will be in touch with you at this time. All right, everyone standing. Everyone standing, please. Maybe you're just unsure of your salvation and you just want prayer. Or maybe you used to walk with God and you decided to do your own thing over time and get comfortable in your own way. If that's you and you just say, hey, I want to make a shift today. I want to be sure. I want to, want to walk out of here with confidence that I didn't have when I came in. The thing about that we just read is that when the seals were open, different things took place that eventually ushered in the second coming of Christ. If we are believers, this is a special day for us, Resurrection Sunday. We are grateful. It's because he lives that we can live and have life more abundantly. But it's also because he lives that he's coming back again. Jesus says, no man knows the day nor the hour. I don't know when it could be. We want to be ready. If you're not ready and you know you're not ready and you want prayer for the second coming of Christ, we don't know when that's going to be. I don't know. I don't got no secret intel. Jesus says, no man knows the day nor the hour. If you just want to be sure you want prayer, we have, individuals that, we have individuals that are willing to pray with you to lead you in a prayer of salvation so you can leave here knowing uh, that Jesus Christ is your portion. Uh, if you want prayer, I'm going to ask you to remain standing while those that are sure take their seats. Anyone here? Anyone here? If you want prayer, you can remain standing. Okay. Are you standing for, for prayer or are you, are you exiting? You stand up for prayer? No, you're, you're exiting. Okay. All right. Well, dear God, we thank you so much for your people. Did we see a hand? Okay. If you could come up, I'm so sorry. I didn't, um, I didn't see uh, a hand. I thought, I thought we... All right. If you did raise your hand or want prayer, you can come up. Right? They said we saw someone. All right. Thank you so much for your willingness to come forward. Anyone else? It's not too late. If that's you, thank you so much for your willingness to come forward. We want to just pray with you in this prayer of salvation that will um, change you for the better. Thank you so much for your boldness, transparency, honesty. Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to pray with you uh, at this time. Anyone else, it's not too late. As we're praying, if you feel the, the, the pull, you can come on up as well. So, dear God, we thank you, Lord, 
God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, it's, it's not uh, uh, too late. We're grateful for the work that God is doing, the pull on your heart. Thank you for being obedient, for being transparent. I trust that your lives will be better as a result of this decision today. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for your sons and daughters that are here. God, we're all creation. We are all your creation, Lord. But you say that uh, for those that believed in your name, you give us the right to be called the children of God. Lord, today, bring your children back to you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for this message. I thank you, Father, for this day, this Resurrection Sunday. And because you live, give these individuals the strength to face tomorrow. I thank you, Lord, for this, uh, uh, this time of surrender. I pray that as they're spoken to by the altar workers, that you would bless them, strengthen them, strengthen this conversation in Jesus' name. And I'll ask that you all just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I thank you for this moment. I believe that you lived, that you died, and that you live again. I thank you for the forgiveness that I have through your blood. I give you praise. I give you honor and glory for the new decision that I'm making for you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now listen, our altar workers are going to just speak with you. Just follow them out here. Just go downstairs just for a few moments. You can come back up and join the rest of the service. Thank you so much for your uh, willingness to come up at this time. God bless you. Listen, Foundation Church, God is, uh, as we said with consecration, uh, brand new and better too. He's doing a new thing. And it's great that we have the lion and the lamb in our lives. And the lamb in our lives. And it's important to know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. It doesn't mean that every knee, those knees that bowed and those tongues that confessed were knees that believed throughout time. Whether or not you believe or confess throughout time, God still has to judge folks for what they've done with the lives and the time that he's blessed us, that he's given to us. So let's be mindful of that as we move forward and go from here, but not from his presence. Let's continue to lift up the name of the Lord and uh, be surrendered people that glorify God with our lives and walk in the victory that we have through the lion and the lamb. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Thank you so much. Hello and praise the Lord, Foundation Church Online family. It's Pastor Roderick here. I'm so grateful that you were able to join us for today's service. Once again, if you were blessed by the message and touched by the word, I'll ask that you text SAVE to the number at the bottom of your screen. We have individuals that are willing to pray with you, ready to lead you to Jesus Christ in a new, fulfilled relationship with Christ. If that's you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to implore you to take a step of faith text saved to the number at the bottom of your screen and we have individuals that will pray with you and be in touch with you about a real and authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being a part of today's service. I trust and pray that if you were blessed by this service that you would sow a seed, that you would be generous in your giving to Foundation Church. Here at Foundation Church, we believe that stewardship is an essential part of our walk with Christ. He calls us to be uh, good stewards of the things that we have been given. So what is the first thing that we do with income or increase? We tithe and give the Lord an offering. Next, we pay our bills on time. Thirdly, we save systematically and invest. And then we spend wisely and responsibly. What does that mean? That means we don't buy what we don't need. We don't spend what we cannot afford to spend. So how do we live? We live beneath our means. We live beneath our means. And that means that a deal is never a deal if it does not factor into your budget. My prayer is that as you hold to these truths and hold to these uh, stewardship principles, that you would become better stewards of the finances that God has blessed us with. If you've been blessed by this ministry, blessed by what God is doing in and through Foundation Church Online, won't you sow a seed? Won't you be a blessing? Won't you uh, partner with us to help exalt Jesus, equip his people, and expand his kingdom? Thank you so much for joining us for today's service, and won't you please be a blessing to the ministry. We pray that God would continue to bless you, continue to encourage you, and continue to walk with you in your journey of discipleship. Thank you so much, and God bless you.